Hello students, I welcome you all in this session of Quick Solutions for All India ACAS Test Series for JE Mains 2021. Test number 4, Code C and D, Subject Physics, test dated on 5th of January 2020. Straight away, let's start with question number 1. Here in question number 1, a cylindrical vessel filled with water is released on an inclined surface of angle of inclination theta as shown in figure. The friction coefficient of surface with vessel is mu, that is less than tan theta, then angle made by the surface of water with the inclined plane will be. We shall be using a very important concept, that is, the free surface of the liquid will adjust itself in such a way that the effective field with respect to container would be perpendicular to the surface of the liquid there. Fine. So, for that, we will try to figure out what are the field that actually is in there with respect to the container. So first, that is very obvious that it is the gravitational field. So I will resolve those of the two portions. One will be along this direction, that is g cos theta and other being along this direction, that is g sin theta. Now, because of this field, the whole of this liquid and the container will try to accelerate along this direction and we also know that there is some friction here on this surface. So the acceleration of this container along this direction that will be A and its value will be G sin theta minus mu G cos of theta. Okay. Now since this container itself is accelerating with this much of the acceleration, so with respect to container, a field that will be acting along this direction on the liquid and its value will be how much? That is A. So effectively, with respect to container, now the field will be, I will say it is along this direction that is G cos theta, other being G sin theta here and A along this direction. So G sin theta minus A we shall have mu g cos theta, fine. Now, this is the effective failure. So, let's say it is making an angle phi with respect to this surface. That means now, with respect to this line, the liquid will adjust itself in such a way that it will be perpendicular to this effective field. So simply I would say the angle that uh, this effective field will be making with this vector that I will find that answer first and it is here tan of phi that is coming out to be mu g cos theta divided by g cos theta or tan of phi that is how much it is now this is the direction of active field and that is making an angle of phi here with this direction that means definitely the surface will make an angle here along this direction and this is the direction of the plane so this angle will also be the phi itself. So what we got here, the value of phi will be equal to tan inverse mu. Fine. So, so we are getting option 1 as the correct answer for question number 1. Now let's proceed to next question, that is question number 2. In question number 2, a uniform spherical cell of mass capital M and radius R is placed at a distance R from a uniform rod of mass capital M and length r. The force of interaction between the two is. Uh, we shall just employ the method of integration here. I would write it as let this being the spherical cell and from here onwards this is actually the rod of mass capital M. At a distance x from here I am taking this small length dx. So the mass of this small portion dm it will be m divided by r into dx fine so 
this portion will experience a force along the direction and this df will be g capital m this distance i just wrote it at x here divide by x square fine and small mass here it should be written down as m dx divide by r this force has to be integrated from x is equal to 2r to x is equal to 3r so i will have this f is equal to integration of this force that means it will come out to be gm square divide by r integration of dx divided by x square from 2r to how much it is 3r so let's have this calculation here g capital m square divided by r this portion being minus 1 by r it is minus 1 by r that means effectively it will be 2r here and it will be 3r here so f we are getting this answer as g m square divided by 6 r square so looking onto the option we see option 1 is the correct answer for question number 2 now let's proceed to question number 3 in question number 3 two satellites s1 and s2 revolve around a planet in coplanar orbit in opposite sense the radii of orbits of S1 and S2 are capital R and 4R respectively. If time period of satellite S1 is T0, then time interval after which satellites are nearest to each other is. Uh, effectively, we need to find the angular velocity of each of these two satellites and then there onwards we will try to evaluate the relative angular velocity. Got it? So, let us have this calculation here. It's been given for the satellite 1, the distance being R1 and the time period is how much? It is T0. At least from Kepler's law, what we know is T0 square must be equal to some constant term K into R cube. And uh, let the time period of revolution for the other satellite being T2, I would write it down as T2 must be equal to K into this will be how much? 64 into capital R cube. Clearly, this T2 being how much? It is T2 square must be equal to 64 into T0 square or effectively I would say T2 will be 8 T0. Got it? Now, if these two, a t naught and t naught are the time period of revolution, then omega 1, it will be 2 pi by t naught and for omega 2, it will be 2 pi by a t naught. If they are moving in opposite sense, the relative angular velocity will simply get added. So, effectively, the omega relative it will be how much omega 1 plus omega 2 it's coming out to be 2 pi 1 by t naught plus 1 by 8 t naught 1 by t naught plus 1 by 8 t naught or omega relative it is actually 2 pi it is 9 by 8 t naught fine so now if this is the relative angular velocity then here the question was we need to find the time interval after which satellites are nearest to each other. Definitely I would say this time interval t dash will be 2 pi divided by this omega relative. It is 2 pi divided by omega relative and it will come out to be 8 t naught divided by 9. Perhaps we got the answer here. Clearly option 3 is the correct answer for question number 3. Now let us proceed to question number here in question number 4, inside a solid sphere of mass m and radius r, a spherical cavity of radius r by 3 is formed touching the surface of bigger sphere. Gravitational field at the center O of original sphere is. We will just have a little bit of elaborations to have this calculation here. What I would say here, for the complete spherical body, 
definitely the gravitational field at this position would have been zero. But if some cavity has been made here, it simply means if there would not be any cavity, then the field would be zero. So if I assume the mass m to be, that is actually the mass of the cavity here, that is to be concentrated here, then whatever the field contribution, because of this mass would have been at this position, definitely effective gravitational field in absence of this mass here would be opposite to that answer. Got it? So what I will do, I will just try to evaluate the gravitational field at this point, assuming the mass on this portion only. Whatever the answer I will be getting, I will have the same magnitude of gravitational field at this point, but it will be just opposite in direction. So, first I need to evaluate the volume of this part. Clearly looking onto the radius here, volume is actually cube of the radius, so definitely it will be r cube divided by 27. So, mass of this portion that would be removed in later stage would definitely be m divided by 27. Okay, And this distance being how much? This one being r by 3, so this distance will be 2 r by 3. So, field because of the mass of this much of the region, it would be along this direction and the value would be g mass being how much? Capital M divided by 27 and this distance being 2 r by 3, that means it is 4 r square into 9, it will be along this direction. So, if this mass would have been removed, an effective field here would be along this direction. Since the positive x direction has been taken along this direction, so our effective gravitational field at this point would be in negative x direction. So, field at this point, it is actually minus of, this will cancel out, it will be 3 here, and 4 and 3 how much? It is 12. G capital M divided by 12 R square this is minus i cap. Got it? So, for question number 4, our answer is option 3. That's the correct answer. Now, let's proceed to next question. In question number 5, two point masses of mass m each are connected by a light rigid rod of length l. The compressive stress developed in the rod is sigma. Now, three point masses each of mass m are placed on vertices of equilateral triangle of side l all of them connected by rigid rod of length L. Now the stress in the rod is sigma 1, value of sigma 1 is. We need to find the stress for the first given condition, this length being L, this is M and this is M. Definitely if whole of the system is in a state of equilibrium, then this M would be attracted by this M along the direction, so this rod will be exerting the same magnitude of force in opposite direction. So, the force exerted by the rod, it will simply be gm square divided by l square. So, the stress will be how much? It has been given as sigma naught, fine. So, it will come out to be gm square divided by a into l square. Okay. Now, for the another given situation where three different masses connected by similar kind of rod there, m, m and m. I would say the force on this particle would effectively be along this direction and that will now counterbalanced by the force exerted by this rod along this direction and this rod along this direction. So definitely this angle being how much? It is actually 30 degree. So the force here F cos 30 that will come out to be root 3 by 2 into 2. This is the effective force exerted on this mass because of these two rods, where F is the force by one single rod. That must be counterbalancing the total gravitational force on this mass and it will come out to be how much? It is g m square divided by L square. This is the force here. This angle yet again, it is 30 degree. So, it is cos 30, that means root 3 by 2 into 2, fine. So, this portion will cancel out this one and this one still we see that F on one single rod that is coming out to be g m square divided by L square. So, just by looking onto the answer itself, if this force will now again divided by A, 
will have the stress sigma 1 would exactly be equal to sigma naught itself. So for question number 5, we are getting option 4 as the correct answer. Now we shall proceed to question number 6. Thank you.